Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today I thought I'd give you all an update on what I've been up to for the last couple of months. I've been very active over on the Shamrock Banks Observatory and I thought I would go through some of the things that we're doing over there just to see whether or not there might be any interest in my larger audience. Shamrock Banks is an official observatory of the Minor Planet Center out of Harvard and I do asteroid, comet, and near-Earth object research. The instrument is an 11-inch Roe Ackerman Schmidt astrograph, or RASA. The camera is a ZWO 6200 color one-shot camera. The mount is the Celestron CGXL, and it has a capacity of 75 pounds, and it is accurate to tracking within half an arc second. So let's cue up the music and get on with some of the work that I do out in the observatory. Now for this, I am using a program called Tycho Asteroid Tracker. I took 35 90 second images of a spot of the sky that is approximately 3 by 2 degrees. And they're loaded up right here in this list. Now if I animate this, you can see the images behind me. Notice that they're jumping around quite a bit and there's not a whole lot of detail. Uh, the reason for this is not a problem with the mount, but I'm doing something called dithering, which means that every couple of shots the telescope moves very slightly, and this reduces the amount of noise in the background. Now the software works in several parts. So here are the raw images. We have these 35 images. Then we go over here and we let the software put the images into something that we can use. It's going to do a few things. First of all, it's going to debare the images. That means that the color images are going to be converted over to a black and white image. Then it's going to calibrate them to make sure the exposure is correct. It's going to align them. It's going to plate solve them. And then it's going to spit them out the other end. Now, that takes a few minutes to do. Let's go ahead and see how it turns out. As you can pretty clearly see, the stars are now no longer moving. That's because they're all lined up. You can see the satellites going through. And if you look closely, you can see our first asteroid. And there it is right there. That's our asteroid. That was the one that we targeted when we set this telescope up and picked a section of the sky to look. However, that's not the only one in the field. So if we zoom out a little bit, go over here and load known objects, let's see what happens. Well, how do you like that? Those are all asteroids that the software thinks it sees. So what it does is it compares all of the images and looks for things that are moving, and then it tries to match it up with orbits of known asteroids. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see there's actually two asteroids right there. We have the one asteroid that we originally saw, and there's another actually crossing its path that we can't see. Now there are a couple of reasons we're not seeing all of these asteroids. First of all, this is a color camera. It's not as sensitive as a monochrome or a black and white camera. And I actually have a ZWO 6200mm monochrome camera, which will be the main camera on this telescope. The reason I have a color camera on it right now is that I was just working to get the collimation right, and I wanted to go ahead and do some live streams to show that we actually did have a telescope here and we could actually see things with it. Uh, and the color pictures are a little more visually interesting than the monochromes but the monochromes are a little more important scientifically because of the accuracy and detail that you can get. Now the final step is to do what's called synthetic tracking, and that means that the software will compare each of those images, identify tracks, identify the orbital elements of that track, and try and match it up to known objects. Now when it does that, it does a couple of things. For example, it'll give us the speed and some of the orbital parameters of the object, and it'll give us the magnitude of the object. This one is a magnitude 13. It's a relatively bright object and easy to see. Now, it also tells us the name of the object, and this is a known asteroid, and indicates that we have high confidence that this is a real track. Now, the way that you tell that it's a real track is you actually look at the image itself, and that clearly is an object that's moving against the background of the stars. Now over on the list of tracks, you'll notice that some are listed as high, some are listed as low, or none. High means that there's a greater than 90% chance that it's a real object. 
Medium means it's 75 to 90 percent, and low means it's greater than 50 percent but less than 75. None means that there's a less than 50 percent chance it's a real object. Each one of these has got to be visually examined and verified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort them by confidence. So we've got five high probability asteroids. Let's have a look at each one of them. So here's the first one. There's the second one. Here is a different asteroid. Now notice that that one is 17.8. Uh, That's a pretty dim asteroid and we're having a little trouble seeing it. So what we can do is we can have a look at display and we can change a few things. For example, we can invert the image. Does this give us a little bit more sense that there's something there? We can increase the magnification. Now we can clearly see that there's something moving in the middle of those crosshairs. The other thing that we can do is we can use what's called false color. And we can also change the contrast to bring it out a little bit more. And as you can see, that's clearly an asteroid. And we go down and we just do that for all of these. I generally do them for high and medium confidence asteroids. So when we identify that one of these tracks is real, we can actually do observations on them. So we can create observations, and there they are. What the computer does is it takes three positions of that asteroid in these 35 images. And from that, it can calculate the orbital elements of that asteroid. So it'll describe the orbit itself of the asteroid. And then what I can do is I can actually create a report to send to the Minor Planet Center. And here are my three observations. So we'll go ahead and copy those, and then we'll go to the next stage. Now this is the website of the International Astronomy Union, which is the clearinghouse for astronomy. And this is the Minor Planet Center which tracks minor planets, that's comets, asteroids, and near-Earth objects. So if we go over here to Observer Information and Other Observer De Services, we can go to something called the MP Checker. And if we go there, we can go ahead and paste my observations in, and I can put my observatory code in, which is Whiskey24. And then I can order this thing to have a look for known asteroids around these orbital observations. And we'll just go ahead and produce the list. And after a couple of minutes, it spits out the information. Now, the important thing that we want to look at here is called the offsets. This is the variation between what I observed on this asteroid and the known orbit of the asteroid or the other observations of the asteroid. So as you can see, my right ascension is dead on, and my declination is dead on. This is indeed confirmed to be this asteroid, HC120. Now, not to flex at all, my average accuracy is within half an arc second of known asteroid positions. So if I find new asteroids, that's pretty good. Thanks to the Patreons, the benefactors, and the members of this channel, the equipment that we have at the Shamrock Banks Observatory is on the level of a university observatory. So I do pretty good work here. So I want to thank you all for your support of this. It's a very important hobby, if you want to call it. It's citizen science in its most basic form. Now, citizen science is very important in astronomy. For example, this is a supernova in the Pinwheel Galaxy, which is uh, M101, and it's up in Ursa Major. As you can see, that is a supernova right there. This supernova was discovered by somebody like me in Japan about four weeks ago. And there it is. This is the type of work that we can do. And the other thing that I can do, and I'll be doing tonight in fact, is taking some pretty pictures. For example, this is the Eagle Nebula. And if you look closely in the center, those are the pillars of creation that Hubble made famous back in the 90s. That's something that I can see from my backyard, and so can you. You just have to have the right equipment. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for your support of this channel. Uh, stop over and have a look at Shamrock Banks Observatory. And in fact, tonight we're going to be doing a live stream at about 11.30 p.m. And uh, I do take requests. 
So we'll have a look at some of the objects up in the sky tonight. Take care, everybody. Stay well, and I'll see you again soon.